Ubi Doo, it's everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And today we're going to talk about the only uh, vintage lens you need. And specifically, it's the uh, SMC Pentax M 1 to 2.8 28 millimeter. This is an all manual lens. Uh, let's take it off. On film cameras, you can focus wide open at f2.8. You can move the aperture wherever you want, but it would stay open. But you would have to push a button on the camera and do stop down uh, exposure. And what it was, they had a notch. And this needle moved up and down as you turn this dial or as you turn your shutter speed dial on an old time film camera. And then when the needle was in the middle of this notch, that was your right exposure. Uh, so if you want to keep a uh, aperture, uh, you just turn your shutter speed dial. Or if you want to keep a shutter speed, you just turn the aperture. But you had to press a button and do it in a stop down mode. As soon as you let go of it, the lens would open up again. And then you would press the shutter button. Uh, the, lens would sh uh, the lens would close down to the proper aperture. The mirror would pop up. The shutter would trip. And then everything would reset. So uh, if you notice, this has this like uh, flash thing, sort of blocks the uh, the scale, which is annoying. That didn't happen. See, it that sort of blocks it. So you have to tilt the camera up like this. Now uh, this is the Pentax uh, KR K-R, and I sort of bad mouthed this camera because uh, maybe I didn't know how to use it. I actually had to open the manual. The guy had the manual when I bought it off him. He gave me the manual the next day. So I was reading about the autofocus. This has an optical viewfinder, so I have a ground glass screen or something like that. And underneath it, they do have a, a LED status bar, which has the F number to shutter speed, uh, what your uh, exposure compensation is, and how many pictures you have left, and maybe some one other two data points. But they have a little uh, green hexagon. When it's off, that means nothing. When you press the shutter halfway, and say you're in manual mode and you have a uh, uh, manual focus on you just turn your focusing ring and then when the little green hexagon in the status bar lights up you're in focus when you're really really close to focus it blinks really fast but concurrently with that when you reach uh, the correct focus the camera beeps and then there's some autofocus uh, red dots that are superimposed on the image and then they light up and your manual focus, the only one that works is the center one. So you would think that when the center one lights up and you hear the beep, you're in focus, but you're not. You have to look at the green hexagon, which is weird because you're trying to look at your subject, but then you got to take your eye away and look somewhere else to confirm uh, the focus. Well, that's neither here nor there. It's better than the old time uh, <laughs> where they had the, uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, etchings on the, the, the ground grass screen and you just had to turn it until it got clear. But this has a, a stop down button when you're in manual mode. Uh, you can focus wide open at f2.8 even if it's set at f8. So when you push this button the everything stops down and the camera calculates the exposure. So of course it doesn't show the f number because there's no coupling between the lens and the camera but it shows you the, the calculated shutter speed. So, you know, if you're old school, then you know what's going on anyway. So it's no big deal. Uh, so I noticed that uh, since I follow those instructions, that I look at the, he the green hexagon, and when it says it's in focus, I seem to get better focus. But there's another thing about old time lenses. Let's take this off the camera again. Say uh, I set the lens at F8, and notice that it's some sort of reddish orange color, right? And they have this little, uh, indicator diamond and then look at um, if you move to uh, three feet or ten meters it's all the same color and if you look where infinity is infinity is right at the eight and then you could get down to like uh, five feet or something so you don't even have to focus this is called your hyperfocal distance uh, if it was really bright and sunny and I was using f16 I move infinity to f16 to 16 mark and look at that, I get all the way down to uh, <laughs> something crazy like, uh, what is that? 
Uh, I would assume that the, oh, 10 feet, 3 meters, sorry, 10 feet, the uh, feet is on the top, meters is on the bottom. So if you go to infinity, you get down to 0.7 meters, that's under 3 three feet, and it is, it's between 3 and 2 feet, that's amazing, because it's a 28 millimeter, and it has a lot of depth of field. So uh, what I would do is, uh, when you buy a vintage lens, make sure it has a depth of field scale, and this way that could speed up, uh, you know, how many good shots you're going to get. Even if you're on the street, and you're at f8, chances are everything's going to be in focus between infinity and almost three feet. So that's pretty good under bright conditions. And that's what I did today. And what is today? Today is uh, February the 5th, 2023. And what's so special about that? Well, February 4th, 2023 was the coldest record-breaking uh, temperatures we had in the past Brazilian years or something, since the last ice age, or keeping records or whatever. When I woke up yesterday, February 4th, around 6.30, it was minus 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, Fahrenheit, what's that in uh, centigrade or Celsius? Well, it's damn cold, that's what it is. So, uh, <laughs> it was just cold. I went to the store, my car started, I came back, 7 o'clock, hung out until 8.30, had to take the cat to the vet, luckily the wind had died down, the sun was super strong, so you could feel it where it was hitting you, just that you couldn't have your skin exposed because uh, the air was so cold. And then when I came home, I stayed home. I wasn't going to go out. So when I woke up this morning, it was 25 degrees. And I said, well, all right, let's check this. Let's see how it does under cold conditions. And it performed really well. Uh, I went to uh, the town that I, I usually go to, one of the towns I go to. And it was about 25 degrees there around 7 o'clock or a little after. And the car, this was in the car with me. And the car was warm because I had the heater on. And then I slung around my neck and I started taking pictures. It was a little dark, so I was at ISO 1600, and I shot a couple of pictures at f2.8 to see what happened. But then uh, what happened was, as the sun actually rises a little before 7 o'clock these days where I live, at 41 degrees north latitude, and um, it said it was supposed to be cloudy, but the clouds didn't move all the way to the east, and the sun was like shining under the clouds. So I reduced the ISO to 800, and I went to 5.6, and then uh, later on, I set it at F8, and I kept blasting away until the return trip when I put it on 200 ISO, and then uh, I put it on F4. So it was wide open, uh, two stops down, three stops down, and then on the way back, there's only one stop down. So you're going to see at F2.8, it's just a teeny weeny bit soft and worse on the edges. Uh, there weren't any uh, uh, festive holiday lights about, and all, most of the stores had their lights turned off, and so I, I couldn't, but there was one example where I could, and you're going to see that in the samples. So I want to turn this on for a minute, real quickly now. So, I got to manually put in uh, the focal length because it has a shake reduction. So, you dial in 28, okay. You get the screen, I'm not interested in the screen right now. Uh, let's see, there's uh, digital filter, oh. High ISO noise reduction. This is an advanced camera, and uh, I have custom. So I think you gotta go to settings. Now, it's really good up until 800. Don't have to no need any noise reduction uh, until you get to 1600. 1600 by empirical formulation. I found out that uh, two clicks up works really good. 3200 and 6400, you have to turn it up all the way, but the, you know, the camera does an admirable job. I was saying it's perfect, but it was executed really well. So that's really nice that this camera has that feature. Let's go back to menu. Uh, oh, menu. Damn. Oh, I'm hitting in info. My mistake. <laughs> that's one other thing. Slow shutter speed noise reduction. If you go here, it's either auto, on, or off. That's, the, that's what you get. So uh, if you put on auto, I, uh, I have to look in a book when it, it kicks in. So I, I put it on on for now. Uh, but it only works uh, on slow shutter speeds under a 30th of a 15th of a second or something like that. So uh, what I also did was I put the uh, saturation on uh, nominal, which is the middle click. And then, oh, no, no. I put the saturation one click below nominal. You only got like... Uh, 
two clicks either way. There's nominal, two clicks down, two clicks up. Saturation was one click down. Um, contrast, I had at nominal. And sharpness, I had all the way up, two clicks up. That's how I always shoot. And uh, this is a key lens. Oh, I say this lens is great and that lens is great. This is a great lens. Like I said, if you're going to buy one lens, you buy this lens. Uh, you buy this lens and rather dumb adapter that you get for 20 bucks. So say you get an excellent sample for under 100 bucks an adapter, uh, it's worth it. It's really worth it. I mean, if you want to uh, delve into vintage lenses, this is the lens to get. I bought this lens, I don't know how many years ago, 30, 40 years ago or something. And I used it on film and it sat around for a long time. And I bounced around, the, the, uh, I had the, the K100D and the K200D. And, um, well, now I find out this is an excellent lens. Oh, I ran it on a Sony. And man, this thing works great. On a Sony, uh, I have the A500 series, which is a 5000 5, series, the A5000 and a five. 100 and they have built-in panorama mode and this thing makes beautiful panoramas it stitches together perfectly so it's got got that going for it a lovely lens uh like i said it's a little soft white open on the edges but as, as soon as you get to 5.6 or f8 f8 is like the ideal aperture for this of course you could use 11 16 and 22 and uh, i may in the future do uh a video about stop down lenses and what, what all that means because what happens is just think if you're at f11 let's just call that f10 well what's uh one tenth of uh, 28 millimeters that's one millimeter so if you're at 16 or 22 22 would be like a half a millimeter pinhole uh let's see uh if i take it off we'll stop down oh yeah see that that's like a half a millimeter you're talking about pinhole territory and then you get the fraction and all that implies. So nowhere is it in focus, but nowhere is it out of focus. And that, that's what that means, basically. So, uh, but this is a great lens. Excellent build quality, all metal. It has a rubber uh, focusing ring. Uh, excellent optics. I can't praise it enough. Uh, there is only one condition where I found some flare. And um, there's one, uh, uh, some uh, college... Uh, had some uh, hanging blue lights and I took a picture of the lights in the center and then I moved it to the lower left corner I was in the same spot and I was uh, shot open at 2.8 and wanted to see what happened and yes it does have coma and flare off axis but if you look at the quality of the images off axis uh, they're usable they're exceptionally usable and everything else is great you know it's like the color uh, the uh, IQ uh, that way it renders tones it's a beautiful lens and there are a dime a dozen readily available so go grab yourself one if this is one lens you want to play around with get this one and i i went to this uh, street and i was shooting some street scenes and this is the only lens i had sure you have to back up or move closer but so what you know and uh what does it focus down to uh 0.3 uh meters which is one foot that's pretty close even for a 28 millimeter but look how small it is i mean even on the sony it's like so small it looks like it belongs on it i mean uh it's a great lens i highly recommend it go get yourself one before i went to the main uh area street i stopped in this little strip mall because it was still dark and had some lights up this is at 1600 and f2.8 and you can see the corner the corners are a little bit soft one corner looks softer than the other but it looks really good i really like this it came out really good and this is just a, a, a the oakland giant farmers market now notice the shopping carts now this is 1600 it may be a little blurry because of a uh, no, high iso noise reduction but it still it did an admirable job wide open I like to take pictures of signs, you know, and they change. I mean, this is a dynamic street. It's not like in the olden days where a guy opened a store and he was there for 40 years. These stores come and go. Some last uh, a year, some last uh, a couple years, some last longer. But uh, there's a lot of change. 
Uh, notice this, this sharp sign in the background? I did that on purpose. Does that sharp sign look sharp? <laughs> they have uh, uh, some pretty kinky models, uh, mannequins there. You know, they're pretty uh, sexy looking mannequins. I mean, uh, <laughs> a lot of stores have this. And uh, this Main Street, it's Main Street in Hackensack. I, I this uh, you know these uh, sexy sort of kinky looking models, and Main Street in Hackensack. Hackensack is a city in motion, uh, so uh, a lot of these storefronts are being knocked down, and they're putting up structures, and I don't even know what this is going to be yet. And here's some older stores, uh, and there's you can see some more modern buildings in the background. Uh, there's a lot of lots knocked down, a lot of new construction going up. Hackensack is uh, being developed. Now, look at the lamppost in the upper right-hand corner. Look at that, and the brick face. Amazing. Of course, this is at F8 um, and ISO 800. And then there's the vast majority of pictures were shot at this setting. So as usual, I did a 16 by 9 full frame crop. I resized it to fit this uh, movie format. And then I did a 1920 by 1080 uh, crop out of a corner. And then I just pasted it in at that size. I opened up a little bit here. I think I went to F4 on this shot. I love these signs, you know, El Turco. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but did I? Oh, I love this shot. Um, someone had a back door open. The sun was shining through, and there's so much dynamic range. I was able to uh, bring out the shadow detail. Oh, what's my philosophy? Everyone knows my philosophy. Uh, take pictures or die. And, you know, a photographer needs to have some nasty habits. A serious photographer that he has to has a schedule to go out and take photos no matter what. I mean, if you're serious about your art and craft, then that's what you just have to do. Uh, yeah, this is pretty sharp in a lower... Uh, Left-hand corner there, that's amazing. Salem and Main Street. So you can see there's uh, uh, more massive buildings, and then there's like s uh, smaller buildings. A lot of these smaller buildings, like uh, you can see, like uh, they knocked down some old buildings, and they just put new buildings there. So in a couple of years, this whole street is going to be transformed. And I figure I would capture it while it's in this transition period from uh, old to new, urban renewal. Well, look at the range of uh, uh, colors uh, here. Um, of course, I was used to stop down metering, and it looked like the camera was uh, underexposing a little, or overexposing a little bit. So the only thing I did was I just hit the highlights. I reduced the highlights a little bit, and on occasion I brought up the shadows. But besides from that, I did no other post-processing um, for sharpness. This is how it came out. Oh, Alan's Beauty Supply. He's there for as long as I can remember. And now he's went out of business. I just met, captured his storefront like a couple months ago uh, before he went out of business. Sexy. Yeah, I got to get me a sexy lamp. Ninety-nine dreams. So, what is, what is that? Is that like a, a hundred and one uh, Aladdin's tales or something? So, I'm very pleased with this lens. It's got this great micro contrast. You know, it's this tonal range, and I call it a telephoto lens because you could take a picture of something and then. Uh, like here, and look at the fine detail in this. That's amazing. So you say, oh, well, you're better off with a zoom lens. Well, you don't really need a zoom lens with this. 
You know, you just, uh, you know, just move closer to your subject or move further away. And if you can't get close enough, well, then you could crop it if you have enough megapixels and still get a usable image. Like if I was to put this on a 20 megapixel mirrorless camera, I could still crop a 6 megapixel out of the center and have a, a, a nice picture that you'd still say was sharp. That's how good this lens is. Now uh, I go to all these towns. I have like a, like five towns I go to, and then uh, you know, or I take to similar pictures. But uh, I want to show you what these different lenses do and a comparison of them, and you can get an idea: is this really a cool lens? Do I really want this lens? No, I say get this lens. SMC Pentax M f 2.8 28 millimeter can't go wrong. I mean, it's a fantastic lens. Built rugged, excellent uh, build quality, excellent optical quality. And they're very reasonable in price. I mean, especially the M lenses, yeah, you get excellent examples for way under 100 bucks. Now, my state, the state of New Jersey, is like an old state. And uh, it had a lot of towns, and a lot of these towns were built up years ago. And uh, they probably looked modern at one time. People would walk down Main Street and say, wow, look at this fantastic street with all these stores and everything. And now it sort of has a little bit of a rundown look to it. Although here's a, a perfect example of some urban renewal where there was something here, and they knocked it down, and now they're putting up something new. And they've still got some really quaint buildings that got a lot of character and I hope they leave them there and what is it? There's eateries, there's uh, bars, uh, there's barber shops, hair stylists, you know they see a lot of that. Now this is the town civic center uh, you'll see the court building and if they have a here's the court building. Now this is a center crop and you can see there's some interesting detail and I could have cropped this a little bit more and resized it. Now here's an interesting picture where uh, I just want to juxtapose like this street sign with everything in the background. Now see how the upper right hand corner is a little blurry? The sign is sharp, but the dome was sharp in that picture. Here is uh, F2.8, wide open, center, and now here's the same s spot, lower left edge, and you can see there's a lot of flare and coma there. Here I stopped down to like a back to f4 or 5.6. I used an ISO 200, and these pictures are sharp. So only under certain conditions can you see coma and flare. So this is a really excellent lens. It's one of the best vintage lenses I own, and I bought it years ago when it wasn't even a vintage lens. It was just a normal lens that anyone would get. I like these reflections, and here's another shot of uh, this building with different lighting. And look, look at that. That's, uh, look at all the details. It's a little soft in the, the lower right, but it, only a little bit soft. And here's the giant farmer's market. Soft, but usable. Get one.